This is Yeti Bones, also OGM. known as Edie. OGM, 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 blue, 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 blue. And this is our favorite five hardcore bands. Bad Brains are the originators of hardcore. They made hardcore before it even was a word. <laughs> it's the fastest, loudest, most chaotic fucking band fronted by the greatest dude ever. I went to go see a group play in, um, in Brooklyn. Went to a show, it was like my first show before even going to punk shows. And this band had covered Attitude. And I was like, I went home looking for that. This was around the time MySpace and like Google was, you know, just uprising. And I was looking for this fucking band. I was looking for the band doing the attitude, but I didn't know you can cover songs back then. And yeah, the Bad Brains video came up from the CBGB's uh, 1982 video. And I was just blown away. I was like, who the fuck is this black dude? This dreads and like, what is this? And ever since then, I was hooked. Honest is a rap group. You know what I'm saying? I know we're talking about hardcore, but hardcore could, could just be rap or, or band. It could be anything. Um, there, are, there are a rap group from Queens, Queens, New York. And uh, I think their first album came out in like 93. Um, they're just hood. They're just hood ass motherfuckers, just real grimy um, dudes. Uh, consist of Sticky Fingers, Fredrill Star, and Sonny, Sonny the Money or something they call it. Yeah, it's Sonny. Um, <laughs> those motherfuckers are the hardest. They literally was the hardest. Um, I, I fuck with them because of of the energy and uh, the way they speak and their their um, their ability to 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 pick really good beats. At that time in the early '90s, I'm pretty sure there wasn't that many producers around, like 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 you know, for them to work with. So they had a really really strong sound aggression and they performed on i think it was the source awards or bt awards i source forget awards. The source awards and these this dude pulled out a, a gun and, and shot it in the air that was like the okay. really shit you won't get no you can't realer. Get more hardcore than that <laughs> you know what I'm if you got a song called throw your guns throw in your the guns air, in the air and, and you, you pull out a gun in a <laughs> in an award show and shoot it it gets no hardcore than that <laughs> <laughs> First time I seen Crow Mags was like by accident. I went to see him at um, House of Vans was throwing these, uh, this like weekly summer free show things in Brooklyn like five years ago. I didn't even know what Crow Mags was. I was just going because it was an event, it was free booze. And they, oh, yeah. they went on and that shit was like nuts. And then they did two Bad Brains covers that really fucking got me off. So after that, I was hooked and I got more into them. And that first album was like the game changer that like goes down in history, the Age of Quarrel. They was kind of on the same path as the Bad Brains with like peace and, and stability and, and about the youth too. So they were yeah. real spiritual with their licks also. But it translated just in a vicious, vicious way that fans are just going wild for. Minor threat is for all the, for all the straight edge, yeah. the straight edge kids. DC, from DC on the same, DC. the same scene as the Bad Brains. Yeah, I first found out about Minor Threat shortly after Bad Brains. Yeah, because it was like, same, like just as intense and just as hardcore, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Their shows were like insane. Bad Brains were just, they were better musicians. Like Minor Threat, they weren't really good musicians, but they just had that ferocity, like that energy. And that's what made them like really solid. And plus they're, I'm, I'm, the one and only album that they do, <laughs> do have is like really, really good. So. Yeah. I, yeah, the first album is the best. I think the second one was where they kind of, kind of, kind of got a little bit light. <laughs> Way back on the salad days. We're gonna go with Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Oh damn, I can't even figure I remember I, when I discovered nah, Rage. Nah, I don't, I don't remember when I discovered them either. Probably was like, 
I don't know, high school watching like MTV stuff. Yeah, high school. I think my boy from like high school put me on. <laughs> he, was, he was the kind of dude that was listening to most deaf Wu Tang and he was a skater kid and he put me up on Rage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and that shit right. was like sick. You know, you can't even put it in a genre too. You can't even put it in a full yeah. hardcore punk genre. That shit is like punk rap metal. They got all little jazz funk yeah. tunes in there yeah. too. So, <clears throat> and all their tracks is just like have a real strong message, and it, it like still sticks with us today. And the times that we're going through now, that it, it never it never gets old. If you still listen to those tunes, it's like they just made that album like last week. Yeah. Even the name of that the the band. Yeah. You know, Rage, Rage Against, Against the Machine. Machine. That's like <laughs> legendary. <laughs>